Hello everyone, let's learn today general features and attachments on the tibia. Now we know tibia is a medial bone of the leg and it helps in weight transmission from femur to the ankle. It is morphologically homologous with the radius and it is a pre-axial bone. Now for side determination you can see my separate video. So this is right tibia I have and as you know it is a typical long bone so it has got two ends upper and lower end and intervening shaft the shaft has got three borders and three surfaces so uh, this is upper end bearing two condyles it is broad expanded as compared to the lower end it bears a prolongation medially that is termed as medial malleolus and this is intervening shaft now let's see upper end as you know upper end bears two condyles medial and lateral the medial condyle is anteroposteriorly ovoid the anteroposterior diameter is more as compared to the transverse diameter so you can see over here this is oval shaped medial condyle as compared to the lateral condyle which is more or less circular and smaller as compared to the medial condyle. So this is medial condyle, this is lateral condyle and in between these two there is an intercondylar area. Now the medial condyle as you know it is having four surfaces the superior surface, anterior, medial and posterior surface. The superior surface is smooth, it is articular and it is covered by hyaline cartilage which comes in contact with the medial condyle of femur. Now if you look it closely in the center there is a depression or shallow depressed area as compared to the periphery where the articular surface is flattened. The peripheral flattened articular surface it is related to a fibrocartilaginous disc which is termed as medial meniscus. The medial meniscus will increase the depth of tibial articular surface. The anterior and medial surfaces of medial condyle they are having multiple vascular foramina you can see over here and they provide attachment to medial patellar retinaculum whereas the posterior surface of medial condyle bears a groove and that provides attachment to semimembranosus muscle. Now the lateral condyle as I mentioned it is smaller and circular as compared to the medial condyle and similar like medial condyle it has got superior surface, anterior, lateral and posterior surfaces. The superior surface is smooth and articular and it is covered by hyaline cartilage which will come in contact with lateral condyle of the femur and together these form knee joint. Now again in the center you can see there is a shallow depressed area whereas the peripheral area is flattened which is related to lateral meniscus. The anterior and lateral surfaces of lateral condyle they show multiple vascular foramina and they provide attachment to lateral patellar retinaculum. In addition to that the anterior surface of lateral condyle bears a flat impression for attachment of iliotibial tract. The posterior surface of lateral condyle bears a groove which lodges tendon of popliteus Along the groove, the fibrous capsule of knee joint is deficient. Now, intralateral aspect of lateral condyle bears a flat circular articular facet for head of the fibula, and together these two form superior tibiofibular joint. So, this is head of fibula with a corresponding articular facet, and together these two form superior tibiofibular joint, which is plain synovial. Now let's see intercondylar area. This is the area between the superior articular surfaces of both the condyles and it is expanded anteriorly and posteriorly whereas it is narrow and elevated in the center. Now this central elevated area if you see from behind you can clearly make out the central elevated area is termed as intercondylar eminence. Now this intercondylar eminence is supplemented medially and laterally by two elevated points or areas which are termed as medial and lateral intercondylar tubercles. Now let's see schematically attachments on the intercondylar area of right tibia. From before backward from anterior to posterior the intercondylar area provides attachment to six structures namely the anterior most is the anterior horn of medial meniscus then comes anterior cruciate ligament then comes anterior horn of lateral meniscus behind to that comes posterior horn of lateral meniscus you can see over here then comes posterior horn of medial meniscus and most posteriorly 
there is attachment of posterior cruciate ligament now anterior to both the condyles there is a triangular area with apex facing downward which shows a roughness this rough area is termed as tibial tuberosity which provides attachment to ligamentum patelli below to that it is related to subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa whereas above to that this portion is related to deep infrapatellar bursa now let's see shaft as you know it is a typical long bone bearing three borders and three surfaces so here in tibia also there are three borders anterior medial and lateral borders and there are intervening surfaces medial lateral and posterior surfaces now let's see first the anterior border it is sinusly curved concave or convex and it is subcutaneous throughout it extends from tibial tuberosity above you can see over here and below it extends up to anterior margin of or anterior border of medial malleolus so this is sinusly curved subcutaneous anterior border now next is medial border it extends from medial condyle above to the posterior border of medial malleolus if you see closely posterior aspect of medial malleolus there is a groove you can see over here and on the anterior aspect of the groove or anterior lip of the groove is a continuation of medial border so this is medial border now third is lateral border or interosseous border which is sharpest it starts below the articular facet for fibula somewhere over here and you can see the sharp lateral or interosseous border and below it splits to form a rough triangular area which is termed as fibular notch which provides attachment to interosseous tibiofibular ligament so here there will be formation of inferior tibiofibular joint now let's see attachments on the borders uh, this is right leg it's cross section and you can see over here this is tibia fibula anterior border of tibia medial border and lateral or interosseous border of the tibia the anterior border you can see over here throughout the extent it provides attachment to deep fascia of the leg this is deep fascia and that is also attached to the medial border throughout its extent so anterior and medial border throughout their extent they provide attachment to deep fascia of leg in addition to that lower part of anterior border provides attachment to superior extensor retinaculum whereas in lower part the medial border provides attachment to flexor retinaculum the lateral border or interosseous border provides attachment to interosseous membrane additionally the medial border in upper third provides attachment to superficial fibers of tibial collateral ligament popliteus muscle and its covering fascia whereas in the middle third the medial border provides attachment to soleus muscle now let's see surfaces as you know there are three surfaces number one is medial surface that is situated between anterior border and medial border next is lateral surface which is situated between anterior border and interosseous or lateral border so this is lateral surface and posteriorly there is posterior surface between medial and lateral borders now let's see first the medial surface as you know it is subcutaneous throughout and in lower third it is crossed obliquely from below upward by great syphenous vein and syphenous nerve the upper part of medial surface in relation to the medial border provides attachment to three muscles let me show you in diagram so in this diagram you can see this is right tibia showing anterior and medial borders and in between these two there is medial surface and we were discussing attachments on the medial surface at its upper part near medial border so it provides insertion to three muscles sartorius with a hockey stick pattern insertion and next to that will be insertion of gracilis and semitendinosus still next along the medial border there will be attachment of superficial fibers of tibial collateral ligament now these four structures are separated by a bursa that is termed as anserine bursa or pace anserine bursa 
Now we know these three muscles, sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus. They belong to three different compartments of the thigh, namely sartorius, anterior, the gracilis, medial or adductor and semitendinosus to the posterior compartment. And these three are also taking origin from three different components of the hip bone like sartorius from ilium, gracilis from pubis and semitendinosus from ischium. In addition to that, these three are supplied by three different nerves like sartorius with by femoral nerve, gracilis by obturator nerve and semitendinosus by the tibial component of sciatic nerve. All these three are not attached to the femur and they extend from hip bone to the tibia. So these three muscles, they behave as guy ropes and they stabilize the pelvis. The pattern of insertion of these three muscles is also termed as pace and serenus. Now next is lateral surface which is found between anterior and lateral borders. In upper part it is facing anterolaterally whereas in lower part it changes its direction to face in front. See this. Initially it is facing laterally and then it changes its direction. So in lower part the lateral surface is in front. Now looking at the attachments along the lateral surface. Upper two third provides origin to tibialis anterior, whereas lower part of the lateral surface is related to extensor tendons and neurovascular bundle under the extensor retinocula. So they are arranged from medial to lateral, like first comes tibialis anterior, then comes extensor hallucis longer standard, then comes anterior tibial artery, then deep peroneal now or anterior tibial now, then comes extensor digitorum longus, and lastly there is tendon of peroneus tertius. Now next is posterior surface which is situated between medial border and lateral border. So this is posterior surface and it is subdivided by an obliquely running soleal line from above downward from lateral to medial. Above it starts beyond the facet for fibula and below and medially it joins with the medial border at its junction of upper one third and middle one third. So this is soleal line which divides the posterior surface into upper and lower part. The upper part is triangular and the lower part is further subdivided by a vertical ridge you can see over here into medial and lateral parts. So by and large the posterior surface is divided by soleal line and this vertical ridge into a triangular area, a medial area and a lateral area. Near this vertical ridge there bears a nutrient foramen you can see over here and the direction is below so the upper end is growing and the nutrient artery comes from posterior tibial artery which is considered as largest nutrient artery of the body. Now let's see attachments along the posterior surface. So this is right tibia showing its posterior surface. This is the soleal line and this is a vertical ridge. So this one is upper triangular area which provides insertion to popliteus muscle. The soleal line provides attachment to soleus muscle, the popliteus muscle and fascia covering popliteus muscle. In the lower part, the medial portion, medial to this vertical ridge, this portion provides origin to flexor digitorum longus muscle whereas this lateral area in upper part provides origin to tibialis posterior muscle. Now in lower part the posterior surface in relation to the medial malleolus under the flexor retinaculum is related to the flexor tendons and neurovascular bundle. So from medial to lateral they are arranged like tibialis posterior then comes flexor digitorum longus, then comes posterior tibial artery, then comes posterior tibial now or tibial now and last tendon is of flexor hallucis longus. Now let's see lower end as you know it is expanded and it has got five surfaces namely anterior, lateral, posterior, medial and inferior. The medial aspect of lower end shows a bony prolongation which is termed as medial malleolus. 
the anterior surface of lower end is a continuation of lateral surface you can see over here and it is related to the extensor tendons which we have discussed under the extensor retinaculum the lateral surface of lower end it shows fibular notch so this is a rough area and this is related to lower end of fibula in between these two there is a ligament termed as interosseous tibiofibular ligament so here there will be formation of inferior tibiofibular joint the anterior and posterior margins of this notch provide attachment to anterior and posterior tibiofibular ligaments respectively the posterior surface of lower end is a continuation of posterior surface of shaft and medially it shows a group which lodges tendon of tibialis posterior next is a medial surface which is continuation of medial surface of the shaft and beyond it is continuous as medial surface of medial malleolus the fifth surface is inferior surface which is articular and which will come in contact with the articular surface of body of talus so this is articulated foot of right side and this is talus this is head this is neck this one is body so this is supratrochlear articular surface and which will come in contact with the inferior surface of lower end like this now let's see medial malleolus it's a bony prolongation beyond the medial aspect of the lower end it has got a medial surface which is continuous with the medial surface of lower end and it is subcutaneous it has got a lateral surface which bears a coma shaped articular facet which will articulate with its corresponding coma shaped articular facet on the medial aspect of the talus let me show you here you can see this is talus and over here there is coma shaped articular facet so together these two will join right and that will form part of the ankle joint the posterior aspect of medial malleolus over here you can see it bears a group which lodges tendon of tibialis posterior the anterior margin of this group provides attachment to flexor retinaculum and tip of the medial malleolus provides attachment to deltoid ligament of ankle joint so this is regarding general features and attachments on the tibia hope you understood well thanks for watching